at my Baja 911. Uh, two, there we go, get it set up. Uh, it's got a spare fuel pump inside from Ollie Tower. Obviously really, really nice. <laughs> What's up, all my Trophy Burrow brethren? My name is TJ Russell. I am uh, the owner of Russell Built Fabrication, and I'm here today on this episode of Burrow Builds to give you guys a uh, behind the scenes look at my Baja 911. All right, guys, so uh, for those of you who aren't familiar with this build, uh, this is coined the Baja 911. This is something that I was inspired to do. Um, a lot of inspiration from luxury pre-runners, you know, a little bit of, uh, of everything off-road. I had spent the last nine years building custom luxury 911s for other people. And being an off-road enthusiast myself, I, uh, I just had this crazy idea to uh, kind of go all out and next level with a Porsche 911. So as you can see, uh, this car is a 1991 Porsche Carrera C4, which means it's all wheel drive, and it was a Cabriolet. It was a convertible, if you can see there, but there's the seam line. It has a composite hard top. There's a few reasons we did that. Everybody, why would you, why would you build an off-road car out of a, a Cabriolet? That's pretty crazy, but uh, a few reasons. One was, we were able to build the whole cage uh, outside the car and set it inside. For those of you who build cages, you know how much of a pain in the ass it can be to either have to drop the cage through the floor of the car or have to cut the roof off to 360 weld everything. So this, uh, from a builder standpoint, was awesome to be able to take that roof off. Uh, another reason is that the coupes were a little, or sorry, the cabriolets were a little bit cheaper than the coupes. Uh, from a standpoint of, of buying a donor car to start with. And I think it makes a pretty cool story that we build this robust kind of off-road monster out of a cabriolet. So it adds for, for a cool story. So let's give you guys, that's the rundown here. Let's give you guys kind of a walkthrough. We'll just start with the front. I guess uh, the first thing you see is the lights. These are Baja Designs XLR Pro. LEDs that we use. I use those as a base and made carbon covers for these. They're pretty cool. Um, I wanted to kind of dress everything up a little bit. So we made these covers. They came out real good. Of course, you can see the, uh, the light pot on the hood. The lights are recessed down into the hood to give a better line of vision from sitting in the driver's seat. You can kind of see them a lot better. Obviously vented to keep them cool. So those are all stuff that uh, that I made here in house from scratch. Uh, we'll talk about the body. I had molded, I guess modeled, and this entire passenger side of the car out of foam during the build process. You can see we widened, widened the fender, the stock fender out, pulled it out a little bit. That's what gave us that vent around the door. Let's all that air inside the wheel well out. Keeps you from parachuting a little bit better. So we had modeled uh, all the these flares here out of foam it took me, I spent about six months kind of going through and carving and the front came out really cool the first go around and then the rear I had to do a couple times, which was pretty cool. It was new to me, that was a new process. I'm a fabricator by trade. So it was really cool to get there and start modeling and, and carving foam and making these rear, rear flares. But every body panel on this car, aside from the shell, is fiberglass. So we were able to take off 400 pounds from the factory car that we started with. Factory C4 is 3,200 pounds and we brought it down to about 2,800, which I'm pretty stoked on. Anytime you can take weight out of an off-road car, it's great. So all our own bumpers, lights, hood, fenders, rockers. These are lightweight doors as well. We shaved about 40 pounds off each door from factory. So 80 pound savings in going with a composite door. Pretty rad. Let's take a look up in front here. So obviously rear engine, air-cooled 911 up front. We've got a fuel cell. 
I had, uh, we made this fuel cell to fit a full size spare, made the shell and then sent it off to Pyrotect to uh, do the bladder. Uh, it uses a radium surge tank with uh, two, there we go, get it set up. Uh, it's got a spare fuel pump inside, which is pretty handy. Flip of a switch in the cabin there and we can switch to uh, our secondary fuel pump if need be. This thing holds 17 gallons, which uh, is a little bit less than most off-road cars, but it's all we can fit in there with the full-size spare. So we've got 15, 52 uh, gravel wheels wrapped in Toyos, open countries. So as you can see under here, everything just fits. And then again, that was the biggest uh, hurdle with this car was making everything fit. They're really small. And I wanted to, to do the best we could to, to fit and put everything in its right spot. Obviously you can see there's no strut tower. Um, we'll get into that in a second. No more struts. This car has a dual A-arm shock tower now in the front, which we'll go over. You can see the uh, nice pretty steel at gray. This whole car was uh, sandblasted before we started, brought down to raw metal, and then coated in steel it, which was awesome. It uh, kept this thing rust free for the year long, year and a half long process, and it looks really good. I don't know, for those of you that don't know, little trick, you can see kind of the finish on this cage. This is polished and buffed steel it gray, and it came out awesome. Everybody usually asks, you know, what color we painted or powder coated that, but the entire, everything metal on this car is uh, coated in steel. It awesome stuff. All right, back to the, the front here. We'll go to the front suspension. We'll give you guys a little tour of what we did there. Grab a light. So obviously a strut front suspension isn't ideal for uh, desert elements. Um, it's okay for rally cars, a lot of that, a lot, uh, that, you know, rally cars run struts, but I wanted to kind of go to the next level with this. So under here is a, there you have it. This is basically a bolt-in tower that bolts into the factory cross member provisions. So what's cool about this is if you rip the whole corner of the car off, you hit a boulder, whatever it may be, uh, in the trailer, we've got a full corner spare, so we're not trying to replace individual parts. But this is, uh, I'm really proud of the suspension. It came out really nice. I sat with Igor uh, from Triton Engineering, and we came up with a game plan on how I wanted to attack this and, and what we were doing. So it's got a chromoly plate lower arm, chromoly tower. Obviously really, really nice. Get up in there. Billet aluminum upper arm and our own billet spindles, uprights. As you can see, all wheel drive. It's a C4 platform. Works really, really well. We're getting uh, 12 inches of travel, wheel travel, out of the front of this, which is pretty good for a Porsche, I'd say. And 2.5 uh, fully adjustable Elka coilovers in the front. We've got 3.0s in the rear. We'll take a look at that in a second. We got about 13 and a half inches of travel in the rear, which I'm pretty stoked on. I don't think we need any more. Um, handles really, really well. So we got a chrome ollie trailing arm here. Kind of hard to get in there and show you everything, but uh, this is a custom trailing arm that me and Igor came up with and it bolts into the factory uh, trailing arm provisions. As you can see, there's uh, you can see a little bit of the cage down below. Double shear, big uniball. 3.0s again, dual rate. Elkas, they work really, really well. Big sway bar that crosses over. Keep this thing level in corners. And then the whole underside of this was uh, undercoated in a, like a rubber undercoating um, on top of the steel it. Just to help keep the pings and noise down. Um, works really, really well. We are seven inches wider per side in the front and about six in the rear than factory. So there you have the front end, everything fits. We've got room underneath there for recovery kit. We've got tow rope, jack, works pretty well. Let's check out the interior. 
So here's the luxury part of these builds. Again, I told you I was uh, inspired by um, luxury pre-runners. I know uh, Stuart Raceworks, Geysers. Um, if you guys follow all those guys, you know that. There, and there's more out there, but they're some of my favorites. I've always had a love uh, for luxury pre-runners. They're just probably the baddest machines on earth. So here you have it. This is the uh, all olive leather mixed in with some Alcantara. We've got Sparco SPX carbon seats, which were awesome. These uh, fold forward so I can actually access, you know, these are really small cabins on the back here. I can access, we've got a storage trunk, pretty cool. You can put all your tools, spare parts, groceries, whatever. But because we used up all the room in the trunk of the front trunk of the car that I needed a place to store some stuff. So pretty happy back here. Again, steel it coated cage, all leather wrapped panels. Up to the dash, all MoTeC goodies. We've got MoTeC display screen, uh, touch panels, control panels. We've got uh, underneath there is a PDM 30, MoTeC PDM. We've got Tilton race pedals. These are pretty awesome. These do the trick, fully adjustable, work really, really well. Again, something that was super safe, yet easy to get in and out of. Is this a full spec, uh, race spec legal cage? Nope. Needs a couple bars and a couple gussets, but because this is the demo show car, um, I wanted to be able to get in and out of the car pretty easy. It's still, you know, a daily driven street car. and something that we could go race in Aura if we wanted to. Again, we'll overlook at some of the nice interior pieces. Of course, it's kind of dirty right now. This thing was pristine a couple of months ago in November when we debuted it at SEMA. And I've been putting it through the ringer. That's what I built it for. You gotta go out and rip it, right? It's not really nice, so. There's a look at the interior. That's, uh, I'm gonna show you guys something that's really cool. This is really uh, special to me. This is something I worked hard on, and I think it's a really cool part of the car. As you can see, I molded a rear window slash air duct. Of course, uh, being an off-road car, I wanted to get all the coolers up and out of harm's way. In the factory, the AC condensers and oil coolers are up in the front wheel wells, which wasn't an option on this car. So we had to put everything back where I could fit it, which is back in the back package tray. So this uh, window directs air at speed. There's a lot of positive air pressure above this rear window and it ducks pretty much sucks the air down into this into this duct. We've got AC condenser and two oil coolers, stacked oil coolers, and two small fans under there that handle all the cooling. Pretty proud of that, came out really cool. Kind of adds that supercar touch to it. Again, everything on this car is one off and in custom. There's not much that we bought off a shelf. You can see the ass end, hips of the old girl. It's probably my favorite view. As you can see here, there's a rear subframe. All the tube work and skid plate and protection underneath. And that all comes off with the tube clamp, obviously, so you can uh, drop the engine if need be. So let's take a look. Custom little light. This is pretty cool. My good buddy Lee, uh, who made the headlights, 911 headlights. It's the name of the company. It made me this rear uh, center light, which is awesome. Lights up. It's a reverse light and brake light combo. Pretty stoked on that. A little look at some of the exhaust and tube work. All right, let's take a look at the engine here. So this, uh, it still has the original Porsche power plant. It was super important to keep all that. Uh, originally, this motor is a 3.6. We punched it out to a 3.8. I sent it off to uh, Raw Sport Racing, who is the man behind all these air-cooled Plan 11 engines. So super dirty, as you can see, it's how it should be. So under here, we've got a MoTeC ECU that uh, controls everything. We've got independent throttle bodies. It's got uh, all mil-spec wiring harness, you know, all the good off-road stuff that you're supposed to have. Uh, GT3 plenums, GT3 exhaust, um, all the good, aside from throwing on turbochargers, it's about as robust of a motor that we could put in this thing. Puts out about 365 horsepower, 
310 foot pounds of torque. So it does pretty good for an all wheel drive, you know, 911 that weighs under 2,800 pounds. It, it does pretty good. So there you guys have it. Quick little run around. I mean, there's tons and tons of details that I'm probably missing. If you guys want to go see more, you can go uh, check out, obviously the whole build is documented on uh, my Instagram, the underscore Baja underscore 911. You can check out the website, thebaja911.com. Tons of details there. But um, yeah, this is it. So we've been kind of putting this thing through the ringer. It was, uh, it was built to be driven and tested. This isn't a trailer queen. So we've been kind of putting it to use. A lot of scratches and dings so far. But so far, so good. So uh, trying to get, get all the bugs worked out of it right now. Get everything dialed in, tune the suspension. Hoping to go race Nora, uh, the 500 in October. That's kind of what this car was meant for, is uh, the Nora 1000, Nora 500. Um, those staged rallies, super good time for anybody that uh, has ever done the Nora. It's probably one of the awesomest off-road races you could go do as an enthusiast. So there you guys have it. Hope you enjoyed and uh, 